Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this baby cow design, which was designed by me. So if you know, you probably already, well if you follow my channel, you probably already know. I have a big cow design on the channel, I have a regular size cow design, and now we have a baby cow design. I felt like I needed to complete the cow design size family, I don't know. I felt like we needed a tiny one. So I did it, and I can confirm that this is actually probably as small as possible to make a cow. I also just realized when I hit record... I forgot to get a cow to show you size comparisons, and I don't know where my cows are. <laughs> so you're just gonna have to maybe trust me that this is smaller than my regular cow design. I've posted photos on Instagram to show you how small it is, but I can tell you that this is literally as small as possible to make a cow. So this is a baby cow. And I have a bunch of cows here, so you can see how it looks. And I'm really happy with how this design came out. Um, I just realized I have the wrong focus mode on. One sec. Okay, we changed focus mode and I found a bull. So if you want to see a size comparison to my regular cow design, this is kind of it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but this guy is like, I think you can kind of tell. He's like significantly smaller than my cow design. And I know this guy's technically a bull, but it's the same as my cow, just without spots and you add horns. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this baby cow looks, especially because I think it just looks so tiny. Um, but yeah, so one thing I do want to say about this design before we start, I know a lot of people, I, I see the comments, guys. Um, I'll say a design's easy, and then someone in the comments is like, she lied, this design is not easy, it's really hard. And I'm going to forewarn you with this design because it is, it's kind of hard. Um... When you get into smaller stuff, I've noticed in Lumagurumi, it gets really hard just because it's hard to see what you're doing because everything's just so tiny. That's definitely the case for this design. Like, these legs are only, like, three loops around, which is really, really tight and tiny. And it's possible to do it. I mean, I did it. But definitely, if you're a beginner and this is, like, your first tutorial you're watching of mine, I do not recommend this design. I have to say it. Um, go make a regular-sized cow. Or a big cow, but or something else. But definitely, if you're a very beginner loomer, and even if this is one of your first tutorials of mine you're watching, I don't recommend making this baby cow design because everything gets really tight and it's just really small. And I think that that's when Luma Gurumi gets pretty difficult. So that's your forewarning. But yeah, I think it's a cute design and it's worth it. And it's honestly pretty fast to make these guys. Um, I think I made this guy last night in an hour, like less than an hour when I was looming because I was preparing for this tutorial today. Um, but other than that, uh, we're going to need to get everything together so we can get started. Um, you're going to want a hook of some kind. I'm going to be using my double-edged hook today, but you could use a crochet hook, a rainbow loom hook, a plastic hook, whatever you have. Just some kind of hook. Of course, you're going to want bands in the colors you want. Um, for to this cow today, I'm going to be using blue for the like light purple in this. And then for the spots, I'm going to be using Sweets Blue. And then for his nose, and his horns, and maybe his feet, I'm going to be using pink. I'm kind of making like a cotton candy cow. And if you didn't keep track of my colors, I'm going to remind you when we like get started what I'm using, just so nobody's confused. But yeah, you're going to want to get your band colors for your cow. You're also going to want some stuffing to stuff your cow a little bit. You don't have to stuff this cow design, but I think it looks better when you put a little stuffing, just because it kind of stretches everything out a little bit more. Um, and then you're going to want some beads for your eyes if you want, there's a hair on my desk, <laughs> if you want to give your cow bead eyes, or if not you can use bands, but these are 4mm round beads because I always get that question. So I think that is it and we're going to get started. I just realized I forgot to take all my bands out so I'm going to do that really quickly. As always, the pattern, the band count, all that's in the description. Um, if I had to guess how many bands this guy takes, I would say maybe about 50. But if you want to see if I'm right or not, you can check the description and there'll be the band count down there. As well as the pattern and everything else. And I'm just going to take some bands out. I'm like taking out way more bands than I need. If we're being realistic, I don't need this many bands. It's also funny because this is my second time filming this tutorial. Um... The first time I filmed it, I got sick the next day, and when I went back and watched the footage, you could definitely tell I was not feeling the greatest in that tutorial. Like, just... I literally watched it back, and I was like, no, we have to redo it. I also messed up in that tutorial, and I thought maybe I could just, like, refilm a portion of it and save it, but then I was like, I honestly think it's going to be easier just editing-wise and everything 
to just, we're just gonna redo the whole thing, which is fine. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, we're gonna start with the cow's body. So you're gonna want whatever color you want for the light purple in this cow, and then whatever color you want for the spots. So for the light purple in this cow, like I said, I'm gonna be using this dark blue. And then just a reminder, for the spots, I'm using sweets. So we're gonna get that. So you're gonna wanna pick up some of your bands. And we are gonna start by doing a tripled cap band with five stitches in it. Um, also a little warning on the spots. A lot of warning on the spots, but just thoughts on the spots. Um, I, I like have not consistently put the spots in the same place for any cow. I keep putting the spots in wherever I feel like they go. And I kind of think that's a good thing about this design is just like, you don't really have to think about where the spots go. So you can follow along and I'm definitely going to tell you where I put the spots in my cow. But also, I've said this before in my other cow designs, it's hard to go wrong with the spots. Just put the spots where you feel. I think it would make it easier. But I am going to tell you where I put my spots, so yeah. Anyways, we're going to get started. So we're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hooks. So this is one, two, and then three. And then we're going to take a band, we're going to pull it through everything on our hook, put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then we're going to go back into this cap band here, pull a band through just the cap band, so not this last loop, put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push this loop from last time over as well. And we're going to repeat that thing we just did three more times, so we have five stitches in the cap band in total. I also usually add one spot band in this, like, start bit, so I'm just going to, um, get a band in the color of my cow spots, and for me that is light blue, or, like, sweets blue. Also, um, we don't slip stitch when we flip colors in this design. If you don't know what that means, just ignore it, but if you do know what that means, we're not doing that. Uh, we're just going to change the color of band we're using. But yeah, we're just going to do the same thing, but just with our spot color band. So we're going to pull the band through our cap band, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And I have three stitches in my cap band so far, but we want five, so I'm going to go ahead and do two more stitches. This is one, two, like that. So once you are pretty sure you have five stitches in your cap band, we're just going to want to count around to make sure. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And now instead of going into the cap band, we're going to go in through this first loop here. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to pull the band just through that loop, push the back one over the front one, push the loop from last time over as well. And we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. I also realized I forgot to tell you you need a C-clip, but you do. And it's basically the C-clip the, the is just to mark where we start and end. So if you don't have a C-clip, you could use paper clip, a spare band. Just something to mark where you start and end so you don't lose your place. And yeah, that's it for the first portion. Also, a reminder because this cow is tiny. Um, it might seem like I'm going fast. And sometimes I don't know if it's not that I'm going fast or if that it's just this thing, like this cow is just so tiny, like the rows go quick. But just a reminder, you can always pause if I'm going too fast. You can always pause the video, do the steps, catch up, and then hit play again. That's kind of like a luxury of this being in video form. So just remember that. But anyways, the next step. So we're going to be increasing everything. And what that means is basically we're just going to do two stitches per loop all the way around. Um, we're still going to be adding spots. I'm going to go ahead and add two spots this row. Um, just going to put them where I feel. So, so this first loop here already has one stitch in it. So we're going to go ahead and put a second stitch in this loop. And I'm also going to do the second stitch in our spot color. So we're adding another. So we're adding another spot like that, and that'll be an increase. So there's just two stitches in this one loop, and that's an increase. But I'll show you again in case that was confusing. So we're just going to go into the next loop. Make one stitch. Go back in. Make another stitch. And that's an increase. And we're just going to keep increasing all the way around until we get to the C-clip. So we're literally just doing two stitches per loop. Until we get to the C-clip.
Okay. And I'm going to add another spot band right here. So on this one before the C-clip, so we're at the loop right before the C-clip, the first half of this increase, I'm going to go ahead and do it in the color of our spots. And then once you get to the C-clip, you're going to go ahead and just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And then you'll just move your C-clip up. Like that. So that was it for this row. Um, we should be at 10 loops now, so I'm going to go ahead and count to make sure I have 10. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that. So now we're going to do two rows of single stitches, and I'm going to keep telling you where to put the spots, but just a reminder, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but you can put the spots wherever you want, so... It's okay if they're not in the same spots as mine. But, yeah. So we're going to do two rows normal now. So we're just going to do two rows of single stitches. And at the end of each of these two rows, we should still be at ten loops. Um, yeah. Like I said, I feel like this cow just comes together so quickly because he's so tiny. But all we're doing is we're just doing single stitches all the way around. So I just did three single stitches technically, if I count. So I did one, two, three. And on this one here, I'm going to go ahead and put another spot band. If you want to put your spots in the same places that I am. And I'm going to keep going. And then after I did that spot band, I did go ahead and I did one stitch. And then on this one here, I'm going to actually do another spot. Actually, no. I'm going to do a regular color. And then on the next one, I'll do a spot. So I just put the spot here. I did two single stitches in the in the same in the regular in the not spot color. I was trying to figure out what I was trying to say there. And then on this next one here, I'm just going to do the single stitch in the spot color. And once again, all we're doing is single stitches. All I'm explaining right now is where we're putting the spots if you want to put the spots in the same place I am. And I feel like I kept saying that, but I just don't want, really don't want anyone to get confused. We are already back at the C-clip because this design is so tiny. So we'll go ahead and move our C-clip up. And since we just did a row of single stitches, we should still be at 10 loops. But I'm going to go ahead and keep going and I'm going to count at the end of our second row. And by the way, all, this, all we're doing this row is we're just doing one stitch per loop until we get to the C-clip. In case you missed that, also my camera has decided to tip. Hold up. Okay. So yeah, so that was one row of single stitches. We're going to go ahead and do another row. And I'm picking up bands. Oops. My camera keeps slipping. I don't know why. And once again, I don't know why I'm putting so many bands on my finger. This is not a big design. Okay. So actually, let me think, yeah, on this next loop here, I'm going to go ahead and just do another spot color one. And we're still just doing single stitches all the way around, so we're just doing one stitch in every loop until we get to the C-clip. And I'm just telling you where I put my spots. I actually think this row's not going to have a lot of spots. I feel like I don't need to put any there. Okay, I think on this one before the C-clip, we're going to go ahead and put a spot band. So just get a band in the color of your spot. And then once we get to the C-clip, we're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And move it up. So now if we count around, we should still be at 10 loops. So we're going to want to count to make sure we didn't accidentally increase anywhere. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this is actually pretty much it for the cow body. I told you it comes together really quickly. That's pretty much the cow body. So we're going to get started on the legs next. And the legs... Oh, nearly dropped my camera. Um, the legs are the most difficult part. So I'm going to try to go slow. I'm going to try to explain well. But the reason why it's difficult, honestly, isn't, isn't even what we're doing. This is made very similar to cow legs I've done in my other cow designs. 
it's just so tiny. <laughs> like, it's just so hard to see what you're doing. But I'm gonna do my best to show you and explain and all of that. So, basically, just like cows before, if you've made any of my other cows, we are gonna kind of like separate this into four. So we have 10 loops and we're kind of using like three loops per leg and then two of the two of the legs are gonna share loops and that'll make sense and I'll show you what I mean by that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And it's three loops per leg and it's pretty tight, so I'm gonna show you, but yep. So this one right here with our C-clip on it will go ahead and be our first stitch. And let me make sure we're in focus. This one's gonna be our first stitch. And then we're gonna go into this next loop, make another single stitch. And then on this third loop here, we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on our hook, and we're gonna leave it like that. Then we're gonna turn, go back into this first loop here that has a C-clip on it, pull a band through everything on our hook, and then push the back one over the front one, and we'll move our C-clip up onto this band. And that was the first row of our leg, believe it or not really tiny and we technically have three loops but it's really hard to see and count so we're just gonna keep going and it's kind of really hard to see where the loops are but I can tell there's one loop right here so we'll make a stitch on that and then this one next one right here is where it looks really confusing because you've got like this one that looks like a loop and this one that looks like a loop but you're wanna, gonna wanna go through this one because you can kinda tell it's the chain we did. Make a stitch on it. And then once again, we're already back at the C-clip. So we're gonna switch to our color we want for our feet. So whatever's the color you want for the little feet on your cow. I think for me, I'm gonna stick with the sparkle color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that. Or maybe I should, hmm. I'm debating if I want to go get some cotton candy bands and give them like cotton candy feet. But I don't know if that's cute or not. Hmm. I'm debating. Um. No, I'm just going to use this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we're going to slip stitch to flip colors this time. So we're going to pull this band through everything on our hook. Put both ends back on our hook. Push the back one over the front one and then move our C-clip up. Like that, because we're switching to the hoof color now. And my battery likes blinking at me, so let me switch out the battery before everything cuts off. Okay, we have flipped camera batteries and ignore the fact that my hook fell out. Okay, but we just switched to our, are we not in focus? There we go. We just switched to our hoof color. So now we're gonna do another row around of single stitches in this color. And once again, it's really hard to see where the loops are, and I feel like if you've done Lumagurumi this small, you just kind of know. And I'm making sure you can see what I'm doing. We're just doing a row of single stitches around this. Once we get to the C-clip, we'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we're going to go ahead and take that C-clip out. And literally, all we're going to do now is pick up like as if we were to decrease and tie this leg off. And I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to grab the inside part of this first loop here. Back part of the next loop, just like if we were to decrease. And if you've never decreased before, I'm sorry, because it's really hard to see what I'm doing. And then we're going to just pull a band through everything on our hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And that is it for this leg. And we'll just come up through the leg here, snag the tail, and then we'll just hide the tail into our cow. If I could ever hide tails on camera. <laughs> I like snagged it so well and then for some reason I grabbed onto something else and then the tail wasn't pulling in. And there we go, we have a leg. So we're pretty much just going to repeat that. Um, for all the legs but there is one thing different to this in my cow design which is we do have to make the legs kind of share one loop and it'll be so this one's gonna share a loop with this the next leg and then on the next one you don't have to make it share a loop I'm gonna stay on camera for all the legs because I know this is kind of confusing 
but normally we don't go on the same loop that uh the other one's already on but on this one we are so we're gonna start our next leg on the last loop of the other leg if you can see that you can see that the legs on this loop we'll just do a single Ooh, I didn't want a spot colored band not yet but I'm just gonna go ahead and start show you how to start making the legs next like I swear in the tutorials for tiny things I always just feel like I'm going so fast but we're gonna go ahead and start the next leg so we'll just do one stitch and this first stitch is gonna be on the same loop as the last leg and then on this next one here I'm gonna go ahead and do a spot band because why not and then once again on the third loop you're gonna chain one up so you're just gonna pull the band through everything both ends back on your hook then we're going to turn, go through this first loop here, and make sure my camera's in focus. I don't know if that made it worse or better. We're going to go through that first loop there. Pull a band through everything. And then push the back one over the front one. And we're going to go ahead and put our C-clip on this one. And now we're just going to do one row around this. So we're just going to come right here, pick up that loop, pull a band, and then you're just making a single stitch. So we're just doing single stitches. Make a single stitch on that one. And then this part is the one part that looks confusing. You're going to want to make sure you go through the chain and not the like slip stitch weird bit. Make a stitch. And then you should be back at your C-clip. And we're going to switch to our hoof color, so whatever color you want for his feet. You're going to pull a band through everything. Push the back one over the front one. And we'll move our C-clip up. And then we'll do a row around this. So we'll go through this loop here. Make a stitch. Go through this one here. Make a stitch. And then once we get to the one with the C-clip, uh, we're going to just pull the band through, make a stitch, and we can go ahead and take our C-clip out at this point. And then we're just going to pick up as if we were going to decrease. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, then we just pull a band through everything, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And then we just put our hook through the leg, come up, snag that band, and then just pull this band into the leg to hide the tail. And that'll be our second leg. So now we just need to do that two more times for the other legs. And yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Literally in my head, I know I keep saying this, but I'm just like, am I going too fast? Am I going too fast? And I'm like, no, this is just tiny. I feel like a lot of my comments have just made me hyper aware of how fast I loom and how fast I talk, which is fun. That sounds sad. I don't know why that sounds sad. It's not like a bad thing. It's probably good I'm aware of it because I do loom fast and sometimes I do forget that's like, I need to like slow down and like breathe. I don't know. Okay, but for this next leg, the last one is not going to share a loop with this last one. Does that make sense? Um, basically, we're going to just do three loops that don't have anything on it. And then this last leg will share a loop with this one. But for this next leg, we're just going to do three stitches on these next three loops that have nothing on them. So we're not going to go into this loop. We're going into this first loop here. And once again, we're just going to do the same thing we've been doing. So we're going to do three stitches. So we're going to go one. And then I'm going to put a spot on the second loop. Two. And on this third loop, we're going to go ahead and chain up one. So we'll pull a band through everything, both ends back on our hook. And then we're going to turn, go through this first loop here, pull a band through everything on our hook, both ends back on, push the back one over the front one, and then we put our C clip on this one. And now we're just going to do a row around the tiny leg. So this one here, and just, I feel like the hardest part of this design is just always making sure you're grabbing the correct loop. 
Make sure you go through the chain here. And then once again, once we get to the C-clip, we're going to slip stitch to our foot color, or not foot color, hoof color, I guess. I don't know why I said foot. Hoof color. So we're going to slip stitch to that color. So we're going to pull the band through everything, push the back one over the front one, and move our C-clip up. And now we're just going to do a row of single stitches around this. And once again, once we get to the C-clip, we'll just do a single stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And then we can just take our C-clip out. And then we're going to pick up as if we were to decrease. Pull a band through everything on our hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we just hide our tail and our leg. And then once again hiding the tail off camera because I still can't do it. <laughs> okay. And then for this last leg we're going to do the same thing where we're going to start on this loop. So you can see that the other leg is in this loop but we're going to go ahead and start on this one. And we're just going to do our two single stitches. Then we're going to go into this last loop here, chain up one, turn, go through this first loop, pull a band through everything. We're going to put our C-clip on this one. Now we're just going to do a row around. If I could pick up the loop. There we go. Make sure you go through the right loops. And I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but that's just because of how tiny it is. And then once again, once you get to the C-clip, we're going to switch to our hoof color. So we'll slip stitch to that. Move our C-clip up, then we do a, C a row of single stitches around this. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. Take the C-clip out, pick up as if you were going to decrease. And then once again, we just pull the band through everything, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And I know I did that last leg kind of fast, oop, but we've already done a couple legs, so hopefully you have the hang of it. But that will be pretty much it for our body. So now we have a cow body. I'm also sorry if this video is a little choppy, like I keep pausing and you can tell I'm cutting. I had an issue the other day where I was filming something else. And I was filming for like five minutes and suddenly it was like, oh, your SD card didn't save that. And I was like, what? So every time after I finish an important step today, until I can figure out why my camera did that, I'm just like, like stopping the video so it saves. Because I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to redo it. <laughs> but anyways, now we're going to stuff our cow body. So you're going to want to get whatever you have for stuffing. You could use polyfill. You could use a napkin or a tissue if you don't have stuffing. But I like using cotton balls. Um, so I'm going to be using that today. Also, every time I have like fun-ish nail art in a tutorial, I always think of this one comment, by the way. I feel like I'm just discussing all the bad comments I get in today's video. I promise the negative comments don't usually bug me, but I always just remember this one because it cracked me up. Because this person was like, oh my god, your nails are like, they're kind of like, not the greatest. And I was like, well, one, I paint them myself and I usually just paint them just for fun. Like, I really, like, it's it's for me, and I make tutorials, so, like, you guys see my, whatever nail art I attempt to do on my nails, but I just thought it was funny, because this person was like, um, your nail art's not the greatest, and I was like, I kind of know that. It's also funny, because, like, I'm an artist, or, like, I'm studying to be an artist, and I can paint all kinds of stuff, but when it comes to painting on my nails, it just, it doesn't transfer. <laughs> like, it just doesn't happen. My nails always end up looking a little weird. But actually, I really do like my nails this time. We got a polar bear on one finger, and then we have, like, squiggles on the other. And I like them. 
so but yeah i paint my nails for me i just always i always remember every time i film with like especially with like just like polar bears or something silly on my nails i'm i i just always think of that comment because i found it so funny i'm like luckily this channel's for looming not for nail art <laughs> um but anyways so to close up the bottom here we're going to do a very similar to how i did other cows if you've made my other cows we're going to come in between two of the legs we're going to go ahead and chain up two so one two and then I'm actually going to flip my hook around here. You don't have to flip your hook. I just want to flip my hook. And then we're going to come across and we're just going to slip knot this into place. Like that. Then we're going to come across here, chain up two. I still have a spot band on my finger. And this is just to close at the bottom. You don't have to do this, but I just I think it looks nicer. And we're going to come across here. Pull a band through everything. And then just slip tight on. And then we're just going to hide the tails. And I'm once again going to do this off camera. I have such a hard time hiding tails. And that's one other thing that is a pain about this design. Once we do the face and stuff, there's so many tails to hide. It's like the tiniest little head. It's not impossible. Like, I did it, but... <laughs> If you don't like hiding tails, this design is definitely a fun one because there's just a lot. We end up with a lot of tails. Anyways, that is our cow body. So now we need to do the head. And um, we're going to start at the bottom for the head. So whatever color you want for like his snout, you're going to want to get that color first. And then we'll do whatever color that and then spots. Same thing. So, like I said, I'm giving him a pink little nose, so I'm going to be using pink. And I completely forgot to update my pattern with how I did this, but I remember, because I made it last night. I actually, like, yeah, that was the problem I had the first time in the tutorial. I wrote how to do the head down wrong. I feel like I was just kind of rushing to get a tutorial out because I was in school at the time, and I was like, oh my god, I haven't published a tutorial in a while, and then I was trying to, like, put something out for you guys. And I, I didn't even realize that day I wasn't feeling well when I filmed it, but yeah, looking back at that tutorial, it was definitely interesting. But anyways, we're going to start with the head. So very similar to the body, we're going to start with a triple cap band, and we're going to be putting four stitches in it this time instead of five. So we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook. Pull a band through, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one. Go back through the cap band. Pull a band through just the cat band, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we're just going to repeat that two more times. I'm not explaining too much in, de how, in depth how to do this because we already did it once. But once you have four stitches in your cat band, you're just going to want to count to make sure so you can have one, two, three, and then four. So we're going to go ahead into this first loop, make a stitch, and then we're just going to put our C-clip on this one, like that. And as you can see, this is really tiny. So for the next step, we're going to be increasing every other, and all that basically means is we're going to alternate between doing a single stitch and an increase, and this is actually really simple because this is really small, so I can walk you through it pretty easily. So this first one right here is going to be our single stitch, so the next one's going to be an increase. So we're going to put two stitches in this next loop. And then the next one will be a single stitch, so we're just going to put one stitch in this loop. And then the next one right here is going to be an increase. And then once we get to the C-clip, we're actually going to slip stitch back to our regular cow color. So that's it for the nose. So you're going to want to pick up some bands in the color of your cow. And we're just going to pull a band through everything, both ends back on our hook. Push the back one over the front one and then move our C-clip up. Like that. So now... Let me just double check on my cow. So 
So now I believe we're gonna do three rows of just single stitches all the way around this. So we're at six loops right now. So if we count, we should have six. I don't remember if I counted, even though if we did count, it was just a second ago. So one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're just gonna go ahead and do um, three rows of single stitches around this. And this first row, I'm just gonna do entirely like cow color, no spots. But I do usually add at least one spot or like two spot bands in the head. So this first row, we're just gonna do just with the regular cow color. Then once again, once you get to the C-clip, you'll just move it up. Like that. And we're just gonna do two more rows normal, single stitches. Okay, I had to take a water break. I always do so much talking in tutorials. Um, but anyways, that was one row normal. Like I said, we have to do three, so we're gonna go ahead and do two more rows. And at this point, you might wanna stretch it out a little bit. Just kinda like flatten it to look more like the cow's nose. Like that. For some reason it just looks really pointy for a while, so I like to just like turn it inside out to make it look more cow nosy. I don't know. Also, I'm sorry if it was blurry that whole time I didn't notice. So I think on this next loop here I'm just gonna go ahead and add a spot band because why not? And if you don't want your cow to have spots on his face, you definitely can just leave them out, but I like putting at least a few. But we're still going around just doing single stitches. And I know it's kind of pretty hard to see what I'm doing. But this design is just so tiny. Okay, we'll move our sequel up. And I think we still have one more row. Um, I'm going to add a bit of stuffing right now just because right now is a good point to stuff a little bit. So I'm going to take my hook out and just stuff the head real quick and I am doing this off camera because it is impossible to see what I'm doing because it's just so tiny. And you definitely want to be careful that you don't overstuff the head because if you do that there's going to be gaps in between your stitches. So just be careful about that. Just go ahead and put my hook back in. So I just did one single stitch, so we have the C-clip, I did one single stitch, and then on this next one here, I'm going to go ahead and add our last spot band. And then the rest of the way will just be single stitches. And then once you get to C-clip, just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we can take our C-clip out at this point. Um, so after the three rows, you are going to want to just check to make sure you're still at six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease until we can't do it anymore, which is going to be pretty quick because this is already really small. But we're just going to decrease until we can't anymore. And if you've never done decreases, I can try to show you. But once again, it's just inside part of one loop. Back part of the next loop, make a stitch. Then I think this next one's gonna be my last one. So once you have the very last decrease you can do up on your hook, you'll just pull the band through everything, push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you'll just hide your tail in the head. Once again, I'm going off camera to do this because I have such a hard time, and I say this every tutorial if you've watched multiple of mine, <laughs> Hiding tails on camera, I just, I don't know why it's so hard. Like, even if I can see what I'm doing, it's just so hard to do on camera. For, like, no reason. It's the one thing I can't do. So, it was also funny, I'm still hiding the tail in, by the way, but it was funny because I was talking to my sister today at breakfast. Because I'm back home for college right now, if you, some of you don't know I'm in college, and sometimes the background changes because it depends on where I am. But I've been home, so I was talking to my sister this morning, and she was like, and it's Christmas time. Well, it's, yeah, it's Christmas time when I'm filming this. And I posted a teaser of something I'm trying to design. And everyone's like, oh my god, are you finally making a Santa? And I realized I still don't have a Santa design on this channel. And I was not making a Santa. And my sister was like, girl, you just need to make like a Santa riding a unicorn. Because everyone always also requests I make a unicorn. 
And I was joking with her, I was like, girl, the day I make a unicorn is gonna be the day I retire, because people have been asking that for so long and I still haven't made one. I don't know why, I just haven't been inspired. But anyways, cow head. So now basically all we have to do is just attach everything in like ears, eyes, horns, tail, and then we just put everything together and then our cow's gonna be done. So ears, horns, they're all made the same way just with different colors. I'm gonna show you how to do an ear first and then we can do the horns. Um, and yeah. So for the ears, you're gonna wanna get whatever color you want for the end of your ears. That could be whatever color you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use our spot color, I think. Or actually, no, I'm gonna make the ends of the ears pink. So, pink. I'm gonna wrap this band four times around my hook. If it would focus, like that. And then I'm gonna double a band. Slide this cat band onto that band. Put both ends back on our hook. Like that. And then I'm just going to slide this onto a single band. And we're going to use this single band to tie this is an ear onto our cow. So you're going to want to just pick whatever side you want for the face. If you want the face's spots like on the face or not. Whatever you decide you, decide you want for your face. And then I usually put the ears like right here. It's kind of so hard to show you where I'm tying things but I'll show you after. And I like to leave all the tails loose in case I don't like where something is tied so I can move it. There's one ear. I'll go ahead and do the other ear real quick. And the horns are made the exact same way but you just do them all in one color. So you wrap a band four times around your hook, double a band, slide it on, put both ends back on your hook, and you just pull a band through everything. And then you'll tie the ear. I usually put them pretty high towards the top of the head, so like right here. And there we go. Ears. And like I already mentioned, we do the like little horns the exact same way. So Band wrapped four times around your hook, double a band, slide it on, and then you'll just take a blue band, slide your horn onto that band, and then you'll just use this band to tie your horn onto your cow. And I usually tie the horns just right between the ears. And once again, if you can't tell, I'm leaving all the tails out until I have the whole face done. And then I'll tuck them in all at once. Because I just find that that's what's easiest. And I'm just doing the exact same thing to make the other horn. I don't know why, my hands are like sweaty right now. It's kind of getting toasty in my room. <laughs> it's kind of hard to slide the bands, but it's okay. Ooh, that's the wrong color. And we'll just tie the horn to the top of our cow's head. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with where everything is right now, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm still not going to tuck the tails in until I do the eyes, just because I find it easier to just tuck the, all the tails in at once. Found them. I literally just... Anyways, you're going to want to get your uh, beads if you want beads for your eyes. If you don't have beads, you can wrap a band five times around your hook, and then just pull a single band through, and you would tie it in. Exactly the same way we tied the ears and the antlers in, just like with where you want the eyes. But if you're using beads, you're going to want to get your beads. So I have my two beads here. Two bands, and then a piece of floss, or string of some kind. I use dental floss. Uh, filling Spiffy, use that. It's actually like the easiest way to get 
feeds onto bands is with dental floss because I, I think it doesn't like fray out as easy. So it's kind of easier to use dental floss. But you're going to put your bead on the string. Then you're going to put your band on the string. And then you'll just fold over. Go back through the bead. I also can't tell if it's blurry right now. But you'll fold over and go back through the bead. And then you'll just slide the bead onto that band. And that's how we'll tie our bead onto the face. So we'll do this again. And then we'll just go ahead and tie our eyes in. I don't want them to be too close, so I'm going to tie the eye, the other eye over here. And hopefully it won't look weird. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to tuck all the tails in. And this is kind of hard to do because there's so many tails, it's such a tiny head, but it is possible. And I also want to mention, because in, in this cow yesterday when I was making it, I ended up with some white spots in the head because I accidentally overstuffed it. You can kind of use the tails to hide any white spots you have if you have any. You could just pull the tail to like cover where the white is showing. So just a little bit of a tip, but I think I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to tuck everything in, then I'll show you how to attach the head onto the body and do the tail. But I'm going to go off camera to tuck all the tails in because it's just going to be tedious. Okay, so I just finished tucking all my tails in and your cow head should be looking something like this, which I think kind of looks so adorable. I kind of love the colors I chose for this guy. Um, but now we're just going to go ahead and attach the head onto the body. So you're going to want to get a couple bands in the color of your cow. And all we're going to do is we're going to go through part of the head. Just pick a spot. Usually what I do is I'll like line them up and then see see where I want the head to be. You can also decide which part is like the back and the front of your cow at this point. Not that it really matters, but if it matters to you, now's the time to decide. But usually I'll just like line up the head with where I want it on the body and then just go through a part of the head. And then go through part of the cow. And I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. And then you'll just pull a band through everything. And then slip knot. And I usually don't have to slip knot the head onto the body more than uh, three times. So we'll just keep doing that. You go through part of the head, go through part of the body, and then just slip knot them together. And I usually do have to tie the head like three times for it to feel secure to me. But if you do it in two times and your head feels like it's on your cow, then that's good. But for this guy, he definitely needs like three times. Like that. And then once again we'll just hide our tails. And the last thing we have to do is just add a tail onto our cow. And then we are done. And our baby cow is done. See, I've already I made I've made a bunch of these cows at this point, so I'm like, this cow is easy, but I understand how this cow could be hard. Just because it's so small, but I love making tiny things, so I kinda love this guy. So there we go, all tails are hidden. So the very last thing we need to do is give him a tail and I need a few more glittery bands. So what we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get whatever color band you want for the end bit of his tail here. I'm gonna do one blue and then one pink and we're just gonna double these bands on our hook. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap them around one time. Like that. And then we're going to just chain up three uh, doubled bands. So we're going to double them. Slide all this onto there. Both ends back on our hook. And we're doing three chains. So double it again. Slide it on. 
One last time. And then we'll just take a band, pull it through everything on our hook, and then just come into the back of our cow here and tie our tail in. And if you want the tail to pull, point down a bit, you can go through like this first loop here and just pull up a little bit. And it should position the tail to like be down a little bit more. If, if it's like sticking straight up in the air because it's happened to me before. But you can just pull up on it a little bit and then it'll angle the tail down. I actually think I tied that tail way too high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to move his tail. It's like pretty much on his back. I'm gonna have to move it down a little bit, but That is pretty much it for this cow tutorial. So Yeah, I hope your cow turned out. Okay. Um, if you're frustrated with it I did warn you that this design was hard. I have nothing else to say But if you make a cow definitely share it with me, um, I would love to see how your baby cows turn out I hope they turn out okay, and I can't I also love seeing like all the different colors everybody does their cows So yeah, definitely share them with me um, Subscribe if you want to see more tutorials. I am on a little break from school right now, so Hopefully I'm hoping I have like six weeks off to put some more tutorials out So definitely subscribe if you want to know when those are coming out um, You can follow me on Instagram to see what's coming. I always post um, new designs I make on there. I also put a list a lot of my art on there and if I ever disappear from here on YouTube you can go to my Instagram and you'll probably see me drowning in homework or just posting all the stuff I'm working on in school and you'll be like oh Ginger didn't lose interest in looming she's just drowning in homework. Um, but yeah so um, yeah I think that's all I have to say. Uh, so I think that's it for this tutorial and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next one. Bye.